Blender now has a super cool feature called the volume cube, which allows us to create whatever we want, basically whichever object you know the math of. And you're probably thinking, you know, Blender already had the mana bulb. And yes, theoretically, in a volume shader like fog, but they were never an actual object. You couldn't add materials like glass or metal, like you see here, right? Now, I won't be making heavy explanations on the math part, but on Patreon I will show you some other fractals like jewel assets and the burning ship. So if you want to get some top-notch fractal assets, this is the place to go. So as the first thing, let's open up Blender and let's keep the cube here. Let's commit the scene, you know, and let's open up Geometry Notes by opening a new tab and clicking here, Geometry Node Editor, right. Let's add new geometry nodes and now the very thing you need is actually the volume cube as I mentioned, right? So uh, you need to have a version of Blender which has the volume cube listed here, right? So the volume cube basically works in a way that um, it has a density input, right? And we can add different values here. So for example, if I want to remove uh, the bottom part of this cube here, how should I do this? Well, I should remove everything that lies below zero on the z-axis, right? So to get access to the z-axis and any calculations which are dealing with um, position, I'm just going to take the position node here, right? And I'm going to add a separate uh, x, y, z, uh, connect this here and also add a math node um, to compare basically. If something is larger than zero, then it should be kept, right? So I'm going to connect this here and as you see, now we have this thing just cut in half and they can control this thing here uh, to our liking and now we just have to introduce the mana bulb formula here to get a mana bulb out of here right so we need uh, to create the float variable of wr which is the square root of the dot product of something and something right and what this operation does it basically calculates the length of our vectors right it calculates the length from the center to each point of this volume cube. So this should create a sphere and let's see if it creates. We're going to go to plug this into the density. It does not. Well, it's true. It just creates like a gradient of a sphere, but we have to cut this off at some point. So we're going to use um, less than, for example, one. And now this is a sphere, right? I'm going to add some more resolution, 128 for the voxel resolution. And to see, well, we have a sphere. And that's because this is kind of a length operation. Now, this is a bit too complicated. I mean, let's do this with fewer nodes. So let's just use uh, this vector math with the length operation, which does exactly the same thing. So if I disconnect this and plug this here, you see it is exactly uh, the same thing, right? So let's delete those dot product things here. And now we have this thing. And this is our variable float wr, right? So I'm gonna press Control J, F2, and I'm gonna type here wr, right? So these, these names here uh, basically come from the fact that uh, in this code, the vector itself, uh, the position vector, is called w. And this r here is basically just one of those angles that is used to determine the sp um, location of our object in this uh, polar coordinate system space. This is basically our first thing. And the next thing is float w o, which is our r cosine of w y divided by w r, right? So. Uh, first, of course, let's add the arcos uh, cosine operation, right? The math node, arc cosine. Make the arc cosine out of the y component of the w vector, which is divided by w r. So to get the y component of the w vector, we're just gonna add a separator, right? A separate x y z, and then we're gonna uh, get this y component here and we have to divide the y component by this wr right so we just need a math node we add a division we plug them like that y divided by uh, the wr and we take an arc cosine out of it and now let's just you know group those and let's uh, call this our w o a variable, right? All right, this here is done, and now we have the last and the third formula, uh, the uh, variable, which is w i, and this is arc tangent of x component divided by the z component, right? So I'm just gonna duplicate this one here, and I have to take an arc tangent of those two, right? So uh, if you open up a math node, you see it in some operations here, right? And we have the arc tangent here, right? But this is not the right one because this one only has one input. So actually we need the arctangent two, which has two inputs. And the first of those has to be 
uh, the x and the second one has to be the z right so x and z and this is now done we are just gonna group this add f2 and let's call this our uh, wi right now uh, how do those things look right like well this one here is length from our center right as you see and this is how it looks the wo is basically like a little cone uh, like that and wi is an angle around the uh, xz plane right so or xz plane like that so this is basically the system of our polar coordinates. The next thing that we have to do is scale and rotate the points, right? So with the first variable wr, we have to do basically a power, like right? we have to put this to the power of eight. Now the number eight here is, can be anything that you want. The shape of the mandal bulb is gonna be different because of that. So for example, in the intro, I used the exponent of five, which means it has five of those little like the shape is like five sided right to so take to the power we have to add the power node right and we're going to take the wr to the power of eight currently uh but i'm actually going to do so then i'm going to take the eight and uh, move this out from here and i'm going to put this here like that because i want to control this afterwards so when i group everything i have access to it from outside right and i'm going to maybe call this one exponent and also let's control J, F2, and let's call this again our WR so that we can see where this thing flows to, right? The next thing is uh, WO, right? WO has to be multiplied with eight as well as WI has to be multiplied with eight. So let's uh, duplicate another math node here and let's uh, multiply WO with eight, right? I'm gonna drag the eight here. And also the same thing with wi, I'm going to drag the 8 here. And also let's group those. All right, this is how the nodes should look, something like uh, that. And I'm also going to shift right click drag, uh, sorry, shift uh, right click drag over those and drag this one here so that it is a bit more uh, readable. Now, this is pretty much ready. The last things that we need is to convert back to Cartesian coordinates, which means the x, y, and z system so that Blender can actually do something with it, right? So which means we're gonna take the WR and we're gonna multiply this with sine of the WO times sine of the WI, right? So take a math node, sine of WO and sine of WI. And we have to multiply those together. And in the end, we have to multiply this whole stuff here with our WR again, right? And like that, press H to make them smaller, press S to scale them on some axes to make them also smaller. This is our uh, w dot x, right? Simple. This is our x coordinate, our future x coordinate, right? Now the next thing is very simple, just wr times cosine of wo, which means we're gonna take a multiplication and of wo, right? Like that and put this into here and multiply wr with it. And this is ready, Control J, F2, this is our W dot Y, our future uh, Y coordinate. Uh, the last one will be our uh, the Z coordinate, of course, which means we are just gonna do so that we're gonna multiply WR with sine of WO, like uh, that, times cosine of WI, cosine here, and we have to multiply those together, right? Something like that, and move this one here. All right, again, a new box, a new name, w dot z. All right, let's move those here. Now, these are, this is our formula, right? So I'm gonna select everything here. I'm gonna move this here. All right, this is how the nodes look and let's go on now and let's actually make a mana bulb out of those. Right, so now I'm gonna group this, uh, but first I have to connect those x, y, and z into a vector, right? So for that, I have a combine x, y, z, and I'm gonna plug the x to x, the y, to the y and z to the z, right? And this vector here is basically iteratively be going do to our uh, like in from here again and again and again. And this is gonna create the Mendel bulb, right? So I'm gonna group this, right? I'm gonna drag the exponent here. I'm gonna add a shift right click, drag a little reroute here. And now I'm gonna just drag over here, uh, keeping out the value and the position and control J it is. Now, this is grouped, and the input here is going to be our 
a position vector, right? So I'm going to press N, uh, group, and here this one is going to be our W. The exponent is going to be our exponent. I mean, it's pretty simple. And in the end, we're going to also have our uh, W, right, coming out from here. And now if I make the smaller uh, things here, right, I have this little node group that is actually my Mandelbulb uh, seed, right? But I mean, I cannot iterate this very well because this actually is missing one thing. Let's read what Inigo says to us. We only have to add C to W now and iterate it in the regular way. So this means uh, when this thing is ready in the end here, in the end of the node group, we have to add a C to it, a certain C, which is actually the same uh, input, right? So we're going to add a vector math addition here, and I'm going to drag from this group input a new uh, node to the vector here, right? And uh, this one is going to be our C, right? And I'm going to move this up right that, like that. And the C also has to come through the node group. So that when I, for example, add multiple of those, you know, I can connect the W, but I cannot connect the C anymore, right? So what I have to do is um, select the C input again and drag this all the way until the end and output this under the name C, right? So now I have those here, right? And I can plug those together, right? But the exponent is still missing. So I still need to connect the exponent also to the end uh, like that. I'm going to call this exponent. And let's go out from this node group now and connect also the exponent, right? Now the C here, the input for the C is going to be the same position like that. And now our Mandelbulb is ready. So where is it? Well, to see our Mandelbulb, what you have to do is to, I'm, I'm just going to delete this. I'm just going to keep one node group for a, for a moment. And you have to add a vector math node and calculate the length of this w vector and output this to the less than and look at that this is the mandible pretty simple right um these are the nodes i mean if you want to see the order of things or anything and now we just have to iterate this to add more detail right so to iterate this i'm just going to disconnect this for a moment and i'm going to add one more and i'm going to now press on alt and right click drag like that so it automatically connects the right things and uh, scientists say that you only actually need four iterations for this Mandelbulb to look nice. This is like perfectly enough of resolution. I'm going to add this to the length and to see, well, this is like something, but not something really good. The threshold has to be two. It looks pretty jacked because it doesn't have too much resolution right now. So let's first make sure that the volume cube and the volume to mesh both have the same resolution. So switch the grade to amount and I'm going to now add an integer right and i'm gonna uh, type 128 here i'm gonna plug this into those things and also into the voxel mount here i'm gonna add some more resolution like 256 but you see it is cut off in some areas and that's because the volume cube has a little bit too a small bounds here so i recommend using minus 1.1 and also 1.1 on all the axes is, and now this should look pretty much the nicest metal bulb you will get. Keep in mind that the resolution thing here, the integer is actually very, can get very heavy very quickly. It's not real time, so if I put this like 128, I can now change the exponent here, right? And I can have very like loads of different mandel bulbs here. And you can also create a Julia set out of it, which is, I mean, can be interesting. For example, if you disconnect this position here and you just use an arbit arbitrary values here, like that for example you can like remove the inside of this fractal and do things like that so just play around and always connect the position if you're not happy with it now to add materials for this thing what you have to do is uh, to add a set material node right so you're going to take a set material make this a smaller resolution for a moment and add this material here and i'm going to calculate the huge mandible back and let's go to the shader editor where we can add some nice materials, right? So a trick for this mandible is actually, I mean, you can render this in Eevee, of course, it will look, uh, look fantastic and nice, but in cycles, when you use some glass materials, it's going to look even nicer. Now, there are no ways to actually use like iteration based colors currently, because you cannot take like those attributes out of volume and put those on those polygons uh, right now. But what we can do is that we can actually uh, use uh, ambient occlusion, which is going to give us pretty much the same result, right? So you see ambient occlusion gives us basically the crevices, I believe, or like some 
tighter spots on the mesh here. So we can use this, uh, for example, to make some areas uh, made out of metal, right? So uh, I'm gonna move this like that here, switch this to constant actually, and put like 0 0.8 here. And now we have this mask for the metallic parts. If the mask is a bit too smooth for you, you can use like 32 here. And this is gonna get a lot uh, more, more samples, more quality, right? And you can connect this to the metallic, right? So now we have some areas that are more metallic. I mean, it's not visible right now, but we can use this for the color as well. So I'm gonna drag another color ramp here. And I wanna put this to the color. And what I want to do is I want this to be white and I want metal metal part to be like something golden and a bit orange like that and I also want this to be really glossy right so again I can use this ambient occlusion and drag from this color uh, to here and now glossy values as you know are zero right so where I want the glossy to happen I have to add I have to have a zero there uh, black and those areas I'm gonna put like 0 0.5 and now I'm gonna connect this to the roughness, and this looks like uh, that. Pretty nice, but you know the Mandel bulb is pretty like plain and has no character to itself. So I'm just gonna multiply the um, the colors through with the ambient occlusion, right? So do something like that, multiply and turn the factor up. I mean, it definitely looks better, right? And I can also change the color of this ambient occlusion that it gets multiplied with. So, for example, I can make the darker areas like a little bit uh, more like like that. And I can see how this looks, something like that. And now I can, for example, turn uh, up the transmission like that. And this looks exactly as the one in the, as I showed you in the beginning of this video, looks really, really cool. I really like this. And if you want to get some more information about the Mandel Brot and the math behind this, and how to make this in Blender, how I made this kind of like liquid flowing metal brought in the beginning of this video, and also, you know, burning ship, some dual assets, all this stuff there, then you can check out Patreon, where you can also download the project file for this video and loads of more fractals. So see you there and have a nice day.